Hey, it's Alejandro Duarte from Vadin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement links that allow users to activate their accounts within the application. And so I'm going to use this example application that I developed in previous videos. So check out the description of this one if you want to uh, learn how I implemented all this code. But in short, what we have is a login view and a register view where our user can uh, register. And right now, it just register or signs up the, uh, the user immediately so they can just get into the application right away. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to uh, send a link, for example, in an email message that the user has to use to confirm that uh, that's the, their email. Now, we, don't, we are not going to do the actual email part here, so sending email and stuff. We're just going to create the URL uh, for simplicity, all right? So, uh, for example, we can start by changing that registration succeeded um, message there instead check your email or actually your check the log for now right uh, and then on the data side we have the user jpa entity that has the username the password and all that and what we want to do is we want to create a new kind of identifier maybe unique identifier that it's very hard to guess so i'm going to call that activation code and we need a way of uh, telling whether a user has um, clicked that link or not. So that means if it's active or not. We probably need getters and setters for that. So I'm going to add them here. Good. And then uh, what we want to do is to generate a random string for this. So simil similarly to how we did it with the password salt but this time with the activation code. And I'm going to use alphanumeric here. So 32 alphanumeric characters because we're going to use that value in a URL. So we don't want weird characters there, right? Okay, so that's it. Now on the server or the service um, layer, we have the auth service with, or the authentication authorization logic is implemented. Uh, we want to create maybe a new Active, uh, activate activate um, a code so act activation code if I can type <laughs> and uh, we can also send like the username or something so to avoid collisions maybe randomly it's uh, the same activation code is generated so it's gonna be a problem here but I'll leave that as an exercise to you and what we want to do is to create a new uh, method here so get by uh, activation code and we pass that activation code so let's create that method here and this is going to return a user of course so that's the user now if the user is not null then we can activate the user user set active true and then we need to save the user and um, I guess that's it cool if not we should probably throw a new exception now I have I think I have an exception here of force out exception so I'm gonna use that one it's fine you can create a new one if you want to be more explicit. I'm just going to create that. And of course, we need to add it to the method signature. Um, that's it. But we need to take care of other things here. So when you authenticate the user, you cannot authenticate a user that it's not active, right? Because we are when we register the user, we are saving that. So we cannot just go ahead and allow um, authentication that does make sense so we need to check that the user is active that's one thing we need to do here and probably we want to um after we register should we do it here maybe i think we can do it here so we have the the user we want to show in the log i'm going to use just print line that's fine http localhost 8080 
let's call we're going to create a new view for this so act um, activate maybe and then the code that we're going to use and we concatenate it here user get activation code all right so so that's it now let's create that activate view let's go to the views package I'm going to use the login package and activation view let's call it like that it's fine route and map it to activate I think it's what we established here we're good it doesn't match the name of the class but it doesn't it doesn't need to match that right um, I like to use a composite here so that means I need to override the init content method and maybe return a new vertical layout whatever we want to do I'm going to assign these to a field so we can use it later and I'm sure we need the auth service so let's make this final and initialize it in the constructor all right so the next step is to read this code how can we do that from here so one way of doing that is by implementing the uh, before interrupt server class or interface sorry and the uh, before uh, enter event I'm gonna put it right here and there is the get location the get query parameters the get parameters this returns a map of parameters I'm gonna call this params and then um, we can uh, get that that param which was code so code and this returns uh, I think it's a list yeah so we need to get let's get the first one and this is the code now we can use the auth service to activate that code or the user with that code this uh, throws an exception let's move this here so it looks better and here what we can do is take this layout and add new text that says wrong or invalid link whatever you want to put there and same here layout add new text account activated maybe it would be nice to also add a um, router link to the login view that's login view dot class so we can quickly navigate there and test whether this worked or not and I guess that's it so let's compile this application and, and try it out all right so let's try it with something very simple now check the log so there is this link that we need to click what if we don't click it and we try to log in so logging wrong credentials and that's because we are checking we're checking that is active here so this fails it throws an exception shows that message very good now I need to click that in order to be able to use the application so let's click it count activated now we can go and authenticate within the application all right uh, so that's what I wanted to show you in this video I'll let me know if you have any questions or ideas on what to cover in future videos thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video